You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Yo, what up? This is High Road the Hero, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, it's John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today it's an honor and a privilege to welcome back rap rocker Hiro the Hero. And he will release his third album entitled Bound for Glory on September 15th via Better Noise Music. Hiro the Hero has also released two singles, Head Underwater, featuring Red Star and Dan Suggerman of Ice Nine Kills and his new single, Show Enough. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I told this to Hiro the last time he was on this podcast, he is exactly what metal needs. Yeah. And I mean that in, in the most insincere way because anything that anybody can bring, especially like he's doing, you know, developing rap in with rock, is a breath of fresh air, in my opinion, to keep everything not stagnant. And I'm very proud of what you're doing, man. Man, thank you so much. That's an epic intro for real. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, my friend. I mean, seriously, you, you've you've overcome obstacles with this, dude. I mean, seriously, when you blend rap with rock and what you're doing and the other old school guys and what they've done, yeah, you're carrying, you're carrying that tradition, Hiro, honestly. Man, thank you. You know, it's a blessing to keep doing it, you know, and do it in a way that, you know, listeners could feel where there's a respect for it. Because, you know, sometimes when you draw that line, it can be kind of cheesy. You don't want it to be that way. So I always try to make it in a cool, respectful way to a metal listener, to a rap listener, and it crosses in a perfect blend. How excited are you? to have your upcoming third full-length studio album entitled Bound for Glory out September 15th. And did the album turn out exactly the way you you wanted it to? Oh, yeah. No lie, man. We had some crazy ideas working, and most of the songs that I wanted on an album got to the album. So I'm really happy about that, especially Show sure Enough. That, that one um, been in the, in the tank for a minute, and when that came out in a video for it, and I did, like, the Enter the Dragon, you know, the Bruce Leroy old-school movie, and... It's just like, a, you know, just coming out of my mind, a vision. It was so crazy to see it happen, and now it's out there. I'm a real happy man. Dude, I I, I love that video, especially where Leroy's sitting there in the theater, and he's eating that popcorn, like, looking around, like, y'all don't see me. <laughs> see, you know, I some crazy people, man. Um, some people out here in not France where I live, Valium and those guys, they really murdered that video, man. They really, like, took it to another level. It looked like a real movie, you know? Oh, yeah, it, it did, honestly. I know this is your third album, but how special is it to have these these albums in your music library and still be able to carry on with your music? Because let's face it, man, some bands are just lucky enough just to have one and they're done. Oh, man, I can't even explain, bro. It's such a great feeling and to be part of a record label that also has Motley Crue, you know, the likes of Nothing More. And speaking of that, going on tour with Nothing More, too. Those kind of bands, Fire From The Guys, The Who... To put our album on that is just it's incredible for me. I don't even know how I do this stuff sometimes. You know? <laughs> but to have the respect I have and my career keeps growing. And one thing about me, it's not like I blew up to the world yet. Um, so it's an opportunity for me to blow up to the world. And when that happens, I can't wait, man. Hey, man, The Who is another underrated band. And I was going to a, a paranormal investigation. I ghost hunt, too. Yeah. And we were oh. listening to The Who. We were listening to The Who all the way down to, to Franklin. I was like, this band is fucking kicking, man. Oh, yeah. Nah, they're awesome. I got to meet them, too. Super cool. Oh, that's cool. Did you add anything differently on this album than what fans are going to be accustomed to? Is there anything differently that we can expect? Oh, man. Nah, you just see the growth of me all the time, man. You know, I'm going to come heavy. I'm going to come. Like, Head Underwater, I think, is a little different for me. But 
it's different in a sense that it's heavy with that almost R&B feel, Red Star, that Sugar and Cam did they thing. And I've always made those kind of songs, like in my mixtape days when I was younger, but to have it real studio style with a single playing, you know, I'm singing low key on it. It's like, whoa, that's awesome. Man. You know, I never thought I was a singer, but I put out the song with David Draymond. I'm singing on that. I'm singing. <laughs> I guess I'm a singer now. <laughs> Oh, me singing, you're gonna see on there. <laughs> is Bound for Glory your redemption album, sort of speak? You you gotta fail, but still have to have that passion and fire to still reach that mountaintop. It's that exactly, brother. When you're in this music industry doing what I do, and you know, I've seen rap be the top and rock be, you know, just slowly come down. Rap came up, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I'm helping Rock come right back up in the game against rap. Because remember, Rock used to run everything in those days. Yes. And to see, I was there. I was there during all of this, man. So I'm in the building stage of bringing this back up to the mainstream. And so I'm so happy to be part of that. <laughs> you know what's weird, man? Me and a bunch of my buddies were sitting around not too long ago. And we were talking about old, old stuff, like old music, that how how good it was. Oh, yeah. And we, we were like what happened to like the old eighties culture of rap music of just didn't give a shit about what you said. Now it's like, uh. yeah. you know, you know. but technology plays a role. Also, you know, the drugs play a role in the culture, you know, it's just back then, you know, also it was like the drug dealers, they were selling the drugs, not doing the drugs. Now they do the drugs. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So times yeah. change, music change, the technology changes. These kids, they'll make a song within seconds and put it out to the world, you know, and don't really think about it. Or they'll freestyle. So it's all about a feeling and not necessarily about the sound now. Whereas you can't really do that in rock. You have to really get down there. Nobody wants to sit down and record drums and guitar and bass unless you come in with some fire and you know what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? So you, you have to really make a great song that's going to hit the people. But when it comes to the hip hop, like you said, the old school, when they went to the studio, they had to pay, and you pay and buy that hour. So when you go in there, you better spit your heart out and make that song sound amazing. Yep. Now do it at home, and oh yeah, I'll make another song. I'll make another song and just throw it yep. out. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, dude, you're you're so right. And, and back in the day with those two inch tape uh, recordings, it's like gotta go cut it, and and it's like, that's time. Trust me, folks, that's time. Now they can just do anything they want on it. And, oh, I can't sing. I'll put the auto tune on that. <laughs> I think I may do that. Put me some model tune and make it to the top. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I said a real voice that ain't motherfucking auto tune, but I be having auto tune now on stuff. They be fixing my voice up so <laughs> Can't get away from stuff. <laughs> How's the fans' feedback been on these releases of these two new singles, man? What's the reaction been and how they've been digging it? Oh, man, it's been incredible, man. You know, just especially my fans that always knew me. They love it. Just anytime I release some new stuff and within this album, bro, I've been getting like a lot of EDM people hitting me up today. I released a song with Black Tiger, Sex Machine and Heritage. It's called Mind State. We did one called Cheat Code. We did one called Resistance. So it's like my voice is going everywhere and I'm building new fans all the time. And when they come and they see either the fans from EDM see me or the fans from hip hop or the fans from metal who brand new to it, and they're what? This is what you do? So it's always that shock. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So The Last Dragon was one of your favorite movies of all time growing up. How, how did you tie that into this new single video, Show Enough? And it was directed by Valentin Clement. Did he get exactly what you're wanting? And how did this all come about? That's me living in Nantes, France, man. It's crazy. I came out here to Nantes. And it's a straight up metal city. I moved out here with my wife because she's from here. And um, I, I just randomly landed in this place two hours or three hours away from Paris. But it's where Hellfest is. Mm. It has some of the coolest metal bars. Shout out AK Shelter. Shout out Lafaria. I never say it right, but they know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Shout them out. Um, and it's just been a great spot. So within them circles and people just know it, that's how my music just goes around. Like even in France, people know me. So this word go, hey, Hyro, need a video for the new song. Oh, we got the perfect person for you. And they brought him along. He brought his crew. And the thing is, they really wanted to make something special because they know, hey, Hyro, he rocked. And they really put it together. Like I said, it came out of my mind. 
and they made the visual. I really want that specific scene in the theater with Show sure Enough, because that's when he really showed I'm badass. I'm showing sure up that confidence, you know, you don't see confidence like that. Dude, you had the confidence when you walked in that theater and you opened up that damn door and you're walking down and singing and stuff. I was like, damn, I was like, Hiro is here. Hiro is here, fuckers. I'm back, baby. Yeah, that's He's back, I'm... bitches. <laughs> so I want to know this, though. Since you moved over to France, is it kind of shocking of how much rock and metal is, is big over there compared to here? It's very shocking. I Just to see, you know. It's metal fans, just like metal people, but they speak another language, man. Yeah. Same soup, different bowl. That's what it is, man. And just the, the love they have for it. Like I said, Hellfest, and there's another one, Motor Culture, coming soon. Hmm. Just, and they sell out so fast, man. They come from all over to rock out and see these bands perform. And it's just like even these shows at Lefaria, AK Shelter, people come out and they come weekly just to see. And they always have new metal shows going on all the time. So it's so cool. But, you know, think about it, man, when you're, and you're going to get on these big festivals, trust me. When you get on those big festivals over there, you're just going to have to stand there. Everybody else is going to sing it for you. That's the beauty of this thing. <laughs> and you know, it's so crazy. It's like an ocean of people, man. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen videos on YouTube, and I just, and all I'm like, like over in London, I bring this up all the time because I mean it since since chills up me. I watched uh Blackstone Cherry play in London. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. Tr Trish just strikes the chord on the guitar, and that's all he had to do. The band played, everybody else sung the song for him. I, I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, the thing about overseas is when they love you, they love you. They're gonna show it. And they'll no. show it a long time and stick with you, man. So that really is great about that. I learned that a long time ago when I came out to England with the blackout. Um, the blackout took me out and I just saw the love for it. And they still show me love to this day. I can walk around England and say, oh man, it's high road. You know, that cool. What led the track Head Underwater to be the first song released off this album? What was it about that song? Said, this has to go out first. Uh, my record label and uh, my producer who did that, shout out to Haas, because we sat on that song for a while. I made that song a long time ago when I was going through some stuff, man. So I was really like in a depressed mode and all this kind of thing. And he hit me up at the right time. And I really kind of let my heart out on that song. And this was years ago, actually, because that song was um, old. But it's like he called me up and was like, yo, we're not doing nothing. And I got this um I said, I'm working with this artist named Red Star, man. I want to show you what we did on it. And I was like, oh, that's how they said, we'll see if we can put it out. I said, okay, well, I'm with my record label. So you can show them, man, you know what I'm saying? Tell them to put it out if you're looking for whatever. And they sent it to my record label. And they're like, oh, what the hell is this song? <laughs> I was like, oh, they start calling. And this has to come out. This is on the album. And that's just how that went. <laughs> It blows my mind when I hear those stories about, oh, well, this song was been here since five years. It's like, yeah, man. What the hell? Why, why has it been sitting there? I forgot about that song, man. He hit me up like, bro, we did this. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. I'm going to send it to the label. And so he sent it, and then, man, it just went crazy from that point. I was like, what? That's, so it's going to lead the album? Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But how important was it for you to write a song to talk about mental health and and you know, especially on this, I know everybody goes to it. It seems like now everybody's coming out and talking about it, and that's great because we need to do and, this. Well, I, like I said, I made that four years ago. So I was just, you know, me writing music is how I express my feelings, my emotions yeah. and things. So I don't really know if the mental health conversation was so much of a big topic at that time, but I think mm. everything happens for a reason, and it was the right time for this right moment. I hear it, and it brings me back to a place sometimes, and I'm like, oh, man, but that's music for you. It paints a picture. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Certain songs take you back to where you was at that certain time, and, and you're like, yeah. oh, my God. Jeez. I know you probably feel this way, but do you feel the new album or any of your albums has to come out swinging for you now? Or no? Oh, yeah. I want this one to come out swinging with a bang, man. I really want to come out swinging. I'm just happy to have an album. I'm happy to get on tour. So I really, I really want to come out swinging. So when, and then y'all ain't even heard my banger, banger, banger. yet called Bound for Glory. When that one come out, it's over. That was hot. That one's hot. <laughs> what's the nucleus that keeps you moving right along, Hiro, creating your music, man? What's that drive still? Oh, man. It's just the motivation to make music, my feeling. Like I said, this is how I express myself, man. And I, luckily, I have people send me music because I don't like sitting making beats all the time. I try to make my beats, but I can't make rock music. I don't play guitar. I don't play drums. So when they send me that, it's that whole time I'm waiting, 
comes out onto the track. You get what I'm saying? It's one of those things. So I'm always motivated, and I haven't made it to the top, top per se yet. So I'm always going to keep grinding, and I don't even know where that's at. And maybe we'll have this conversation when I'm at the top, top, and be like, yeah, this is, I don't feel like making no music. I'm too rich, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have that dream one day, hitting the lottery big time, and nobody will see me. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, what, what is yeah. this? Peace this? Out. <laughs> <laughs> was there a track for this album that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to when it was first brought to the table? I'd say head on the water for sure. Uh, but nah, man, most was kind of kept as is. Me and Matt Good got into the studio with So Enough and all these other tracks we got. And it just, it was magic. Like, bro, I, I literally rocked that album. Like, in two weeks, I was done. Like, me and him was just killing it. it wow. When I feel something, I'm going to feel it to the fullest. You get what I'm saying? So Matt Good made those songs. And so Haas did head on the water. And that joined on the album. And yeah, man, it was just one of those things where when you you in a zone, you're in a zone. Same with a uh, Bird School Work Death, my first album. I knocked that out in like two weeks. I was just in a zone, man. Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on this album? I know these are your babies, Hiro, but I mean, are there any that stick out for you personally? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I'm gonna say show sure enough. I'm that one for sure, for sure. I I wanted that out there because it's so. I came through crushing buildings like Godzilla. I can't wait to perform it live. <laughs> but no, um, special song, Bound for Glory. I can't wait because it kind of shows my journey and how I feel about my journey. And I'm bound for it, man. I don't know when, what time, but it's going to come. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and I loved how you incorporated Godzilla in this because I'm a big Godzilla fan. Oh. I loved him. Loved him when I was a kid. Oh, bro, Godzilla, and somehow got Master Splinter in there, too. So I was a Turtles fan, so we knocked out two. But... Any songs, Hiro, that did not make this album, we could see on another album, EP, or just maybe a single down the road from you? Oh, yeah, man. I got a few that didn't make this album that I'm, I'm hoping come out on another one. Man, I got so much music in the tank, but I have a few that I was like, man, I want to put this out now. I came with one a little too late that I know is on the level of Head Underwater and those. So maybe that hit the next album. But yeah, I got some in the tank that's ready. Is the track listing placement important for your album or EP releases or does it even matter? As long as it works smooth. Really, I got a shout out to my label and everything. They came up with a cool order and I was like, yeah, I like that order right there. You know, tell a story. But it's not in a sense like, because these were songs of over my time making music. So it's not necessarily like I sat in the studio and blended it all together to make a perfect, cohesive thing. You get what I'm saying? This is just me knocking out and trying to do the best of the best. And that's what you got, you know? Does a full length album suit you better than an EP at this time? Or would you consider doing an EP down the road? Or do you just like doing full lengths? Oh, no, I, I put out an EP earlier, um, Worst Behavior. It's called Worst Behavior. It has um, Worst Behavior, Five Senses. I forget what else was on there. But, yeah, I put out one earlier, but just kind of pushed it out. Boom, they take that. And that has some bangers. Those are some that I'm going to be playing live for sure because those are some of my favorites too. What's that musical growth you've seen from yourself working on album to album that impresses you the most, if anything, man? Is there anything that, that's gotten better or, or something you've gotten more comfortable with in your music? Oh, uh, yeah, I was for sure say song structure. I know how to put a song together structure-wise as an artist, and I can see, um, you know, that's a big, big growth and change for me. And I used to struggle with choruses. Now I can easily knock out a chorus. You get what I'm saying? I know what's what the sound is what's gonna stick and you know the words and the lines that be like yeah and i can correct myself better like i can hear something and be like nah that's not it oh this is what it's supposed to be so i love that growth and you can see that in my album especially i'm gonna say song structure chorus wise yeah i know how to make songs now you know so matt good produced this who's worked with asking alexandria and hollywood and dead man oh, yeah. did, he, did he get something out of you that maybe somebody else might not have got does he push you to your limits yeah, it's more so um, me and him connecting through our love of hip hop. He came from um, uh, from first to last, and he knew Skrillex. You know, they worked together, so some of that influence also in there. We have that same love, so it's more of us just having fun and creating the dopest metal we can. You get what I'm saying? Like when I made the song "Fight," 
um, that was just like me saying, yo, let's try to do some, because my parents from Trinidad, let's try to do some soca music with metal. So that's where, and that's how it come out like that. So we was just putting our minds together. So not necessarily put, we were both pushing our brains to the next level. How can we make this so cool and so different? So we're going to throw Hiro the Hero's music out the window right now because he next, these next couple of questions are all about where, you, where you're at with your music. We're, we're going to push you. We're going to test you, my friend. If you could write an album equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? Equivalent to my favorite band as far as rock? Does it matter? They, uh, Rancid Out Come to Wolves, that one. There I, you go. Yeah, man, that one I just played back to back to back to back, bro. Ruby Soho and all of that stuff. I remember when I first moved to LA and I was, didn't have a car or nothing. I had a skateboard. I used to skateboard to Venice Beach just playing that. And I was just like, wow, these dudes created such a fucking awesome album, bro. You can play back to back, dude. So, dude, that's a I banger. Was, every every song on that album is a freaking banger. Yeah, man. That was a beast. Time Bomb has to be my favorite song off that and, album. Exactly, man. Time Bomb. I just love how they do it, bro. It's, it's just so cool, too, you know? They talk about that old school punk, you know, black shoes, black hat, Cadillac, and I'm like, Yo. yeah, the boy's a time bomb. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there, man. That's some cool shit. <laughs> What's been your most memorable show that you've been a part of that you still can't believe it's happened that you was there or been a part of? Uh, most memorable show? I say almost every festival I've been on, like Aftershock and download festival in england soundwave australia you know all of those festivals were just been so incredible to me even though sound like there's memories of being so awesome and there's also a memory i opened the main stage a few times and literally nobody there because they got to come to the gate first so there's those memories too but yeah man i say all festivals where that ocean of people is so incredible to see but then I'm also having experience that maybe some musicians haven't had by being playing a festival. You get what I'm saying? Because it's such an ocean of people that you don't connect. You can't really see the person like on a smaller show. You get what I'm saying? But it's cool to have that experience. But how do you know like when you're winning that crowd over, especially at a festival, and and, the, and you've got every genre or flavor of everybody coming in, every genre of music, especially like, you know, you're bringing rap into a metal festival blending this in yeah have you, have you ever had like to win over crowd and by the time you're done they're like no come back we want more oh, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Nah, I'm, usually um i wouldn't necessarily say win over the crowd i just kind of bring the crowd into my world <laughs> that's way to do it on stage i'm just happy to rock so i'm gonna have fun i just want you to have fun with me so once i see a lot of people having fun with me i say that's a win and you know it's always the mosh i really sometimes i don't even like to ask for the mosh i want the mosh to happen naturally i want the music to make you feel like i need to move and when i make that happen without even saying anything i know i did something yeah last time i tried to crowd surf and it didn't go too good <laughs> no no more crowd surfing for me <laughs> if you could be a member in an iconic band, Hiro, and play one of their legendary shows, which band would it be and what show would it be possibly? Man, I'd have to say, you know, I would be, well, me, I sound like Zach, so Rage for sure, I would like to do Zach De La Roca, but I'd have to say, uh, shit, Limp Biscuit and uh, Woodstock, <laughs> I would love to, <laughs> to just be like that. Give me something to break now. I mean, I would hate it and love it because I know he went through some shit, but to play that to that crowd, oh my God. To be any of those bands, to be DMX on Woodstock would be fucking awesome. That was just, I go back to that festival, I go back to that show, and I lose my damn mind. Also, um, what's the dude's name from, uh, uh, with a little help from my friends who sing that one? Uh, Joe um. Cocker. Yeah, yeah. I would love to play that show. I seen a show where he looked like he just high, he coming out singing. I was like, man, this feeling of what the fuck is going on. I would love to play that show too. I always go to that performance. Joe Cocker with a little help from my friends. Y'all go check that out one if it's still around because sometimes you can't find it, but it's an insane performance. He was a, yeah, I agree with you. When he took the stage, it was, 
I wouldn't say Jim Morrison esque because with Jim Morrison of the Doors, you didn't know what the hell you were going to get from song to song or if it's going to be if they're going to finish the concert. But yeah, they, he would definitely put on a great show, Joe Joe Cocker for damn sure. And and oh, Limp Biscuit and Limp Biscuit at, at Woodstock, dude. That was a- mighty. <laughs> that I watched that. I I sat here and I was like. I was like, they're going to fucking ride. I said, wait and see. I told my buddy, I told Brian, I was like, look, man. I mean, I, I was a kid looking at it just like, what is happening right now? Yeah. But I know that energy was crazy. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that happened, but I was like, what? You played that crowd and it was in a frenzy like that? What the hell? But think about it, man. That's music history. That is music yeah. history that nobody will ever forget if you love music like me and Hyrule does and everybody else. <laughs> we, we remember that that that's epic yeah man it was such a moment in time like like you said you mix rap in it like dmx was there james brown all this kind of stuff it was insanity to watch or let's talk, let's think about this metallica and guns and roses going on tour and axel didn't come on and play and they ride it and was it montreal i think they oh, destroyed yeah. <laughs> that's the love of music man how crazy is that and you know uh-huh. it's Things where I watched the Temptations movie and they said, you want somebody to be like what they last a bit of change. You want to buy a peanut butter jelly sandwich or your music? You know, you want them to buy your music. <laughs> All right, folks. Hiro the Hero will release his third album entitled Bound for Glory on September 15th via yeah. Better Noise Music. Please go out and check his music out and support him. He's very, I'm telling you, just go check it out. If you haven't listened to it, do yourself a favor and go check it out. So, Hiro, my friend, how can folks stay in touch with you? Buy this album, all your other releases. How can they do that, sir? Oh, man. At Hiro the Hero, everything. Instagram, make sure to go follow on Spotify. Even get on my TikTok. Go get my YouTube numbers up, man. Hiro the Hero. Yeah. Before I let you go, as always, would you care to do another promo for my show? Oh, no problem, man. Yo, what up? This Hiro the Hero, and you listening to Bods Mayhem Hour. Everybody, please stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link that you definitely want to go out and subscribe to if you like what I'm doing, and I hope you guys and gals do. Please go out and check out my friend Hiro the Hero. Pick up this new album that's coming out on September 15th, Bound for Glory. The first two tracks off this is amazing, and uh, please, please just give him a fair shot. And Hiro the Hero, man, thank you for doing another interview with me, my friend. Oh, bro, thank you. It was so fun, man. Love the questions, man. Good energy. Thank you so much, brother, man. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.